Syria says that U.S. terrorists and separatists have costed over $107 billion in losses in oil, gas, and mineral sectors since 2011. The Syrian Foreign Ministry made the announcement in separate letters to the Secretary General of the United Nations and the President of the Security Council. It said terrorist groups and separatist Kurdish forces in northeastern Syria are looting, smuggling, and illegally trading the country's resources. Ministry stress such violations are committed under the protection and with the support of U.S. forces illegally present in Syria. It said the so-called international coalition led by the U.S. has also been carrying out bombings and aggression on Syrian oil and gas facilities. It said uh, Syria's oil, gas and minerals production has also plummeted due to such hostile actions. The ministry called on the U.N. to deal with the humanitarian and economic situation in Syria with more uh, seriousness and efficiency. And now joining us for this news review program is Tony Gosling, historian, investigative journalist, and former BBC employee joining us from London, and Mike Harris, finance editor at Veterans Today, joining us out of Portland, Oregon. Gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you both to the uh, program here. I guess we'll start there in, uh, in the U.S. with you, Mr. Mike Harris. Um, great to have you. I haven't spoke to you in a while. hope you're safe and doing well out there in uh, Portland. And now, Mike, we have, um, I got a little quote here by uh, Jimmy Carter. It says, uh, this is from uh, January 23rd of 1980. He said, let our position be absolutely clear. An attempt by any outside force to gain control of the Persian Gulf region will be regarded as an assault on the vital interests of the United States of America, and such an assault will be repelled by any means necessary, including military force. Obviously, when it comes to the Middle East, we know that oil is a big issue with the U.S., and we know that a huma you know, humanitarian issues and human rights and all that good stuff just sounds great in uh, boardrooms and uh, in front of uh, parliament members and, and Congress. But we know what, why the U.S. is really out here. Uh, your initial thoughts on the story there, bud. Well, my thoughts on this and you know, my personal experience in Syria in 2014, 15, and 16 has been that uh, the U.S. Uh, is sponsoring terrorist groups for the explicit purpose of looting the uh, the mineral wealth and the uh, petroleum wealth of not just Syria, but the entire Persian Gulf. Uh, that's what's been going on there for, for some time, and it's, it's outright looting. One thing I want to point out to the, to the listeners is that this terrorism that is going on in Syria and the looting of the oil, this is a major criminal enterprise. The oil does not transport itself to the refinery. It has to be moved there by truck, by pipeline, by a very large crude carrier ship. Something is moving it there. So that is one aspect of the criminality that's going on. The other aspect is the refinery has to know where this is coming from. So they know they're buying purloined goods. They know they're buying uh, stolen oil. They know they're supporting terrorism. And the third point on this is that the banks who are clearing the transactions must know that the people who are selling the oil, who are being paid by the refineries, are also terrorists. So it gives you an inkling as to how huge this, this organized crime is that, that's looting Syria. This is not some small thing. This is not merely a, a few thousand jihadis in the field. This is truly a globalist criminal enterprise that is looting Syria for the purpose of supporting their own interests. They've lost their revenue stream out of Afghanistan when the heroin went away because the Taliban has eliminated 97% of heroin production. So they have to make up for it. So they're looting Syria. And that, that's what the purpose of this is, is to take wealth to support the criminal enterprises. Without money, they cannot bribe, they cannot blackmail, they cannot murder. They have to have money to pay their criminal counterparts. Otherwise, their jobs do not get done. Thank you there, uh, Mike. And Tony, I'd like to welcome you uh, to the program here. Tony Gosling there, joining us out of uh, Bristol, or London, it says here. Now, uh, Tony, I, I like to, to Mike's point, I like he used globalist criminal enterprise, but according to, you know, heads in Washington, London, and whatnot, we, we heard a lot of, uh, we have to get Bashar al-Assad out of the way. He's a dictator. He's horrible for the, uh, the, for the uh, people of um, Syria. What, 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 so is this good for the people of Syria, looting? Uh, basically any form of uh, revenue that the country has? Well, no, it, it's uh, a war which is continuing to be waged 
by the West uh, on Syria. And uh, this is a, a proxy war. It's not, I think, for most people that have, have, have looked into this in any way, including those in the English language that read uh, publications like the Middle East Monitor and Middle East Eye, because the, you know you, there are publications in this part of the world that do look at these issues. Uh, the, the, this proxy war is just simply carrying on. Uh, the other aspect of all of this is that this, these energy wars, which effectively are a form of economic warfare, uh, the idea is that you know you can wage war in a country like with cyber warfare without actually necessarily killing their people. Uh, this is uh, the, what they've done, and I can remember back in the 1990 covering, actually for the BBC, the first Gulf War, uh, and we were told. Uh, that, oh, well, it's so sad that the Kurdish people are kind of caught in the middle here. And what's happening is there's a genuine grievance by the Kurds, which is being exploited by the West here, and uh, extremely aggressive tactics towards them, uh, of course, by the Turks. Uh, and the fact that they're stateless is being exploited by the West to be a thorn in the side, both financially and militarily, uh, and the continued assault on Syria, this proxy war which was started by the West really as part of the Israeli Yinon plan uh, to balkanize the Middle East, to break up the borders, to make porous borders. Uh, and this has provided a fantastic opportunity for organized crime with the protection uh, of NATO to, to move into the region. Uh, but I noticed, amazingly, here in Britain, we've got quite a lot of support for the Kurds. I think this is uh, by way of um, you know, creating little groups which are saying, oh, Kurdish freedom is so important. Uh, so, for example, in Somerset here in England, uh, just this coming week, we've got workshops, uh, for example, uh, the Revolution Against Turkish Fascism workshop, another one, uh, the Kurdistan Freedom Movement workshop. This is by this uh, uh, environmental group, Earth First, at their gathering. I'm not saying they support uh, the looting of this uh, oil for by NATO, but the the uh, what what's happened here is a genuine grievance by the Kurds is being exploited uh, in order to uh, continue the war in the Middle East. And if you're looking at who's doing this, who's planning this, all you need to do is Mac look at MacDill Air Force Base in Florida, uh, which is what's called CENTCOM, their headquarters. And this is the arrogance of the United States. And of course, I don't excuse Britain because we just do what the Americans tell us to do uh, in having this unified command structure for the whole world. And, and that's what uh, uh, my colleague there was talking about, the globalists. In the United States, there is a military uh, operation to take over the world. No part of the world is free of these unified command structures. Every part of the world, including China, Russia, Australasia, has got an American uh, command headquarters dedicated to controlling what happens in that part of the area and pushing US intelligence and military might in that part of the world. And I think the sooner that the unified command structure in the United States is shut down, the better. Unfortunately, though, many of the decisions which are made in US politics seem to be nothing whatsoever to do with what happens in the big wide world. They're all to do with impressing various voters in domestic politics. So the rest of the world, I think we need to uh, uh, you know, put pressure on the Americans to say, look, mind your own business and get your military fingers out of all these pies. And it's not just, obviously, the Middle East. It's also uh, the, uh, the you, you know, the Asia, too, where the Americans have been interfering, particularly with China. And, and Mike, so, I mean, so what, what are we supposed to, th we're supposed to think when we hear U.S. and their allies say that we care about, um, you know, human rights in the Middle East, we care about free and fair elections in dictatorial countries, we, we care about uh, basically uh, import or de exporting our uh, democracy to them. Is that genuine or is that a front or is, that a, is there a little bit of that and a little bit of we need to get our fingers wet while we're out there or is it all about we need to get our fingers wet while we're out there? It's all bullshit. It's all propaganda. Uh, the U.S. Uh, doesn't care a bit about this. You have to realize that the U.S. foreign policy, our entire State Department, is run by Israel. Uh, we have so many Zionist, Khazarian types in there that, that run and dictate what the American foreign policy is. So if it works for the benefit of Israel, it does not work for the benefit of the American people. None of these wars benefit the American people at all. We've been completely betrayed, we've been infiltrated and undermined by a Zionist occupation government that has taken over the United States. And my friend Tony, he, he's, he's spot on with a lot of these things, that there, there is a plan for global domination. 
but it's not out of the U.S. It's by this, this Israeli Khazarian globalist group that wants to take over the planet. This all goes back to the banking system. That is the, the real leverage here. And that is the, the, their, their strength is also their weakness because the, the global financial system is verging on collapse right now with the collapse of the U.S. dollar, which we're watching before our eyes. So uh, just pay attention and stay strong. Uh, you know, if, if I could give any advice, it would be for Russia and Iran to support Syria and, uh, and kick out the, these terrorist organizations that are looting the country. Because once you cut off their cash flow, then they cannot afford to continue their criminal enterprises. Once they lost the heroin traffic out of Afghanistan, the opium traffic, they had to open up the U.S. border and bring in fentanyl and bring in more human trafficking in order to make up for the revenue deficit that, that was caused. So we're, we're hurting them. The war is going on. The Taliban did good, good work by ending the opium trade. But this is a multi-front uh, uh, war, and we've got to fight it at every level. And what's going on in Syria must be ended. And I would, I would really highly recommend that Iran and Russia uh, unify to expel these uh, these terrorist groups that are leaving uh, Syria out of the country as quick as possible. And Tony, final thoughts with you. You're a country in the Middle East. How do you preserve your territorial integrity, your, uh, your national identity, your, your sovereignty, and avoid at the same time getting targeted by U.S. Uh, apathy and sanctions or whatnot? It's, I know it's a fine line to walk. Is it possible or is it basically impossible in today's day and age? Well, it's extremely difficult, isn't it, to retain any kind of independence. The United States has been targeting any country that, that tries to do that, such as Libya. Uh, I mean, you know, the list is, is, is extremely long. But I think one aspect, and I would have to, uh, I think maybe Mike and I can agree to disagree uh, about who is behind this. I think it's, you know, not just Israel, it's the Anglo-Zionist empire. Uh, which is really an alliance of the Zionists in the United States and in, in Britain uh, and obviously in Israel itself, plus uh, their allies uh, in Europe mainly. But the, the, this is an empire, this is an, like an old fashioned empire, which is now, because of these, uh, these uh, energy wars going on in the world, uh, is now turning on its own people. Here in Britain, we're finding energy bills literally going through the roof with price fixing going on because because the uh, energy prices of gas and, and, and oil, diesel, petrol are all, are all now traded on these commodity markets with derivatives. Uh, it's become a, a casino. And because of the, uh, the, the war in Ukraine, um, actually not the war, because it's not the war that's caused the problem, it's the sanctions by the European Union, the United States and Britain uh, on the Russians. So, you know, they're quite happy to still supply uh, these, these, this energy. It's just we don't want it. And therefore, we've created a massive crisis in energy prices. So what needs to happen in the West if, the, uh, if Britain, people in Britain are to be able to heat their homes this winter is we need to have intervention by the government to take over this infrastructure to supply this uh, energy to people. Otherwise, these massive multinationals, BP and Shell, etc., are simply going to jack the price up as far as the market will bear. And if half of their customers uh, get cut off because they can't afford to pay, well, they'll take these inflated prices from all the rest of so the governments have to intervene. And Michael Hudson uh, pointed out, the economist, the American economist, who also teaches in China, he, he pointed out that there is a war also going on in Ukraine between the finance capitalists of the West and the industrial capitalists of Russia and most of the rest of the world. You understand that elected governments have to control these big corporations to rein them up and also to own and control their own infrastructure if voting and democracy is to mean anything. Uh, and I think that's uh, another thing is that the, the, because our gangsters and criminals in power uh, have turned on their own people and are also targeting them with exploitation and driving them into poverty because they see their domestic populations as the enemy too. All right, gentlemen, thank you to, to you both. It was a pleasure to have you both on. That's uh, all the time we have, but it's a tough uh, uh, landscape, a political uh, landscape today to really navigate out here. And it's very complicated. You guys both shed some really uh, good light on it. Thank you both. Uh, Mr. Tony Gosling there joining us from London and Mike Harris joining us out of Portland and viewers. That's a wrap for the segment of your Press TV's news review program. Thank you for tuning in. And goodbye for now.